Good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channel's television and Millicent Walker. First, the highlights. Persons living with disabilities in Lagos and Abia states lament difficulties with access to COVID-19 vaccination. Delta State Government partners World Bank inaugurate State Steering Committee on COVID-19 Preparedness and Response, COPRA. And World Health Organization announces highest number of COVID-19 deaths in West Africa since the pandemic began. And almost 80,000 COVID-19 tests were carried out in the past week, according to reports from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control dated 15th August, with states like Edo and Lagos testing the highest with over 14,000 samples. Eight people are reported to have died from COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, just as the NCDC also recorded over 600 new cases in 16 states and the FCT. The Delta variant of COVID-19 has continued to drive more infection to Nigeria, but adherence to all non-pharmaceutical measures remain essential to reducing its spread in the country. In the last 24 hours, Nigeria witnessed a slight decrease in its daily COVID-19 case count as the NCDC announced 674 confirmed cases reported from 16 states and the FCT. Lagos was the worst hit with 355 cases, followed by Rivers with 87 infections. 38 cases were recorded in the FCT, Ogun had 33, 32 cases were reported in Akwaibam and Oyo State, Edo had 22, while 20 cases were reported in Ekiti. 17 cases were registered in Kwara, Delta had 12 cases, Bayelsa had 8, Gombe 5, Kaduna and Oshun registered 4 cases each, Enugu and Nasarawa had 2 cases each, while Plateau registered 1 case. There were 0 cases reported from Abia, Kano and Ondo states, and Nigeria now has a total of 185,267 confirmed cases. 185 people have been discharged in the last 24 hours, increasing the total number of recoveries to 167,923. The NCDC also reported eight additional deaths from COVID-19 causes in the last 24 hours, raising the fatality toll to 2,244. Presently, there are more than 15,000 active cases in Nigeria, while over 2.6 million samples have been tested so far. A review of data provided by NCDC shows a breakdown of testing conducted in the last week. The states topping the testing chart are Lagos, Edo, FCT, Rivers, and Imo states, while states like Adamawa, Kogi, Borno, Yobe, Kebe recorded the lowest numbers. In Africa, there are over 7.4 million confirmed cases and more than 187,000 deaths recorded across countries on the continent. The total global confirmed cases have now surpassed 210 million, while more than 4.4 million deaths have been reported. COVID-19 cases and deaths are rising fast on the African continent as some countries uh, battle a third wave of infections, while others face a threat of a fourth wave. New variants, such as the highly transmissible Delta variant, are appearing in more countries and have been reported in some of them so far. Africa has also lagged behind the rest of the world in the vaccination race, accounting for less than 2% of the doses. This next report looks at the current situation and the response in some countries. More than 7.4 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 and over 187,000 deaths have been recorded on the African continent. According to the World Health Organization, this week, West Africa has recorded its highest number of COVID-19 deaths since 2020. Rapid and determined action from governments and people in a number of Southern African countries, for example, has led to a drop in cases. This shows that public health measures and only where absolutely necessary restrictions save lives and protect health systems and economies. Nine out of 23 countries experiencing a resurgence are in West Africa. Guinea Conakry, for example, is experiencing rising cases. Cote d'Ivoire was added to our list of countries with cases surging last week, and Benin was added this week. 
testing rates have been low in most countries in West Africa, mainly focused on travelers. I'd like to encourage all countries to urgently reinforce the public health and preventive measures, including testing, to understand where the virus is circulating and to inform action to protect communities. As WHO, we've assessed the functionality of health systems in West Africa is 21% lower than in Southern Africa. So we can expect the pressure of COVID-19 to hit these countries' systems harder and faster. To prepare for further increases, capacities to manage cases need to be urgently stepped up. Overall, Africa recorded over 244,000 new cases in the week ending on the 15th of August, an 11% drop from the week before, and a second straight week of declining cases. However, 9 out of 23 countries experiencing a resurgence are in West Africa. They include Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea and Nigeria, countries which are also tackling other outbreaks. Although the number of COVID-19 cases and fatalities might still appear comparatively low on the continent than other regions of the world, the looming health shock of the pandemic has left a major impact on the continent's already strained health systems. One example is Kenya. The East African country is confronting a severe fourth wave of infections, with the country's oxygen production firm doubling production this year to keep up with the surging demand from hospitals that are treating critically ill COVID-19 patients. We do production close to where oxygen is needed. That allows us to uh, lower the costs of transportation. And then we have a, dis a simplified milkman distribution model where we bring oxygen to a network of hospitals around the primary facility where the production is done uh, to bridge that oxygen gap. Another region doing its best to contain the spread is Southern Africa. SA is going a step further to manufacture polymerase chain reaction PCR test kits to accelerate testing in the country and on the continent and to also stop reliance on imports. It also says it will open vaccination to those aged between 18 and 35 years of age. In some villages in Algeria, North Africa, they decided to go under a self-imposed lockdown, boost efforts of medical volunteers to limit infections and help ailing residents. We prefer to see patients in the outskirts, in the villages, to decrease pressure on hospitals and especially to have a kind of lockdown to avoid patients going to other clinics or hospitals. We prefer to examine them in the villages. While vaccine shipments to Africa seem to be picking up with the COVAX facility delivering almost 10 million doses to Africa so far in August and the African Union delivering 1.5 million doses to nine countries, health experts say that vaccine nationalism will only prolong the pandemic, especially as the Delta variant continues to rise in the midst of low levels of adherence to safety measures. And Dr. Chijoke Kaduru is a public health physician and he joins us from Abuja Studios for more on the situation in Africa. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much, Melissa. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. We're seeing, I mean, lots of AIDS coming into Africa, but unfortunately, vaccine coverage remains low. What's your take on richer countries already using booster shots? Well, I mean, I think there's some, I mean, there's some global recommendations that we have to look very critically at, especially for a national program that chooses to introduce a third dose of the vaccine or booster shots. Um, I think it's important that we look at those global um, evidence and understand that we have to consider the strength of what we know around the benefits of the third dose and the booster shots, as well as look at its implications for the global vaccine supply chain, as well as for vaccine equity. What we're seeing playing out is geopolitics and vaccine nationalism at the expense of, so to speak, poorer countries or lower middle income countries, especially in Africa. Ultimately, some countries have the capacity and the resources to deploy a third shot um, or a booster dose of the COVID-19 vaccines. But ultimately, this would just continue to prolong the outbreaks because this virus is smart. It's learning, it's mutating and changing. And the longer we have swaths of people who are unvaccinated, the more likely that there will be new variants of this vaccine that will potentially start to evade, I mean, the vaccination 
information itself that we have available, and that's something that should be a global concern for all of us. Also, I mean, those vaccinated are still fighting the virus due to the Delta variant, but the, the problems are not just in our vaccines. There's also the low compliance and vaccine hesitancy. So if, for example, the African continent isn't getting enough vaccines, can we survive alone on just the non-pharmaceutical interventions? I mean, ultimately, the, the public health and social measures need to be complemented by vaccine uptake. And the good thing is that across board, the vaccines are safe, they're effective against them, all the different variants that we've seen of interest. And so we, we really just have to encourage each other to, I mean, take up the vaccine for those that are eligible. Um, but again, we have recognized that the African continent does not have a challenge of vaccine hesitancy. We really just have a challenge of vaccine inequities and I mean, inadequacy of supplies to us. West Africa is experiencing a resurgence, according to WHO, and they identified low testing, especially among travelers. So if we don't test, I mean, how do we inform plans to tackle the virus? What do you think our, our data is, is really telling us about how the virus is hitting? So, I mean, at this point in the pandemic, we have, um, the, I mean, the, the strongest capacity for testing that we've had in the West African subregion since the, the, the pandemic first started, right? And I think what we're seeing is a lot of low demand for testing across board, despite increased capacity for testing. And so it really behooves on all of us to continue to encourage each other, to continue to share messaging, to continue to generate demand for testing across board, because we really need to get tested. If people don't get tested, we're really not going to be able to come and contain the, the outbreak or to be able to mitigate its effects on essential health services as well. So really, we need to continue to drive the, I mean, the demand for tests because at this moment, we really do have the capacity to test more and more people. So we're also seeing other diseases coming up like the Marburg virus, the threat of cholera, I mean, the, the new case of Ebola uh, in the Guinean Nationale. Are we on track to um, reinforcing our surveillance measures, especially for West Africa? I mean, I think that West Africa has had to battle on a number of um, infectious disease outbreaks over the last few years. And this has actually helped the, the West African subregion build and advance its capacity for surveillance. We've seen significant investments in this surveillance architecture to, I mean, to fight and contain Lassa fever. We've seen that for cholera outbreaks. We've seen that even the West African Ebola outbreak as well. And many of these structures, as well as the polio legacy structures and, and the structures for HIV AIDS containment as well, have all contributed to being able to work and contain COVID-19 in the West African subregion. But of course, we continue to need to invest in these surveillance systems to strengthen them to continue to build one block at a time. Because ultimately, we will continue to suffer these outbreaks and we're going to need all of these surveillance systems to be able to help us contain them and to help make sure that we mitigate its effects on all of the essential health services and continue to strengthen our health and community systems. Indeed. We would like to thank you, Dr. Chijoke Kaujuru, public health physician. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much, Millicent. The Kaduna State Government says it has conducted almost 150,000 COVID-19 tests from April 2020 to date. Dr. Amina Mohamed Baloni, Commissioner for Health, who disclosed this during a briefing, says that so far 66 persons have died of COVID-19 complications in the state. In terms of COVID, eh, from last year to date, we have treated, uh, we have confirmed 9,201 uh, cases uh, and 9,121 of them have been treated and discharged. Okay? Um, we have had 66 deaths. Um, and we have presently 10 people on admission. All the distribution is across all ages. Um, all 23 LGAs have recorded cases over the period of time. Um, the metropolitan LGAs have higher, so that I'm talking about Kaduna North, Kaduna South, Igabi and because simply they have more population. And you know COVID is spread, spread by population. Eh? Our success rate for treatment is 99.8%. Um, we wanted to know age score, age distribution. Age distribution, um, it 
cuts across all ages, but the ages that are most affected are those that are highly mobile. So from the 25 to, to 40, 45, these are the people always going around, traveling, going somewhere. Uh, we have more males than females that have been affected. You can, I'm sure, understand why more males go around than females. We have more on the COVID-19 updates when we return. Please stay with us. Over in Delta State, the government has promised to partner with the World Bank in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The state governor, Senator Sofia Koa, stated this during the inauguration of the Delta State Project Steering Committee of the Nigeria COVID-19 Preparedness and Response Project, COPREP, at the government house at Sabah. The governor, represented by his deputy, insists that government will continue to collaborate with the NCDC and development partners to ensure the availability of adequate infrastructure for timely case detection and management to build capacity of the healthcare workforce. This is a World Bank assisted project that is meant to be implemented by the collaboration of the various states in the country and the Nigerian Center for Disease Control to be able to assess what the World Bank had made available to prepare the various states in their responses to the various waves of the virus. On behalf of uh, the Law Service Committee, we do pledge commitment to, the, um, this, to this particular assignment. We promise to discharge our duties dilig diligently and be sure that we score well so that Delta State can actually um, uh, obtain all the benefits of this one billion um, uh, Naira grant. Away from Nigeria, according to Germany's Agency for Disease Control and Prevention, the Robert Koh Institute, the country has clearly begun a fourth wave of coronavirus infections. Positive samples among PCR tests shows a rise from 4% to 6 within a week until mid-August. Rising infection numbers come as the more contagious Delta variant becomes the dominant form of the virus, making up 99% of all cases in Germany. Meanwhile, schools are starting again in parts of Germany, while parents worry that the measures will not be enough to keep children safe and ensure that lessons can continue if cases surge again. How much precautions are they taking to prevent the spread? Uh, what are the plans for vaccinating kids? Well, Deutsche Welle correspondent Clifford Kunin is with us now from Berlin on the coronavirus situation in Germany. Hi, Clifford. Are there fears of a new wave of the pandemic in Germany, especially when schools open? Well, Germany's vaccination commission, which is called the STIKO, has approved vaccination for all children and young people above the age of 12. This came after withholding approval for a very long time. Now, there's been a lot of back and forth about the schools and how to deal with the gradual reopening after the summer holidays. The health agency, the Robert Koch Institute, believes that the fourth wave of the pandemic has already begun. This is based on the rise in the number of positive PCR tests to 6% from 4%. It's mostly young people who are affected and this has led to worries about what will happen as the schools return from the summer vacation. And there are also strict measures in place in schools. In large parts of the country, children have to wear masks at school and register whether or not they've been vaccinated. Another big factor here in Germany is widespread testing, and this is particularly obvious in the schools. Students are tested several times a week, and this is in sharp contrast to other parts of the EU where there's a lot less testing. Like in other parts, vaccines for kids can be a controversial issue. We're seeing this in other countries like the US. Um, is there much opposition in Germany? Well, yes, there is opposition. But the prevailing view here is that there's a need to do as much as possible to keep children and young people in schools after lockdown caused hardship for youngsters and upset learning processes. Health experts are concerned that the Delta variant is spreading so quickly among young people. The Vaccination Commission has examined data from the US where around 10 million children and young people have been vaccinated 
and decided that the advantages of being vaccinated far outweigh any possible very rare side effects. Some high profile figures have come out saying that vaccination for children is unnecessary or risky, but people have countered with arguments that the virus can have a very serious effect on children. Now, to speed up the vaccination process, there will be mobile vaccination teams visiting the schools to encourage more vaccinations. Some doctors have said that could lead to peer pressure on teens to get the jab, but other health experts say that's not a bad thing. So infection rates are rising, vaccination rates stagnating. What measures are being taken to, to speed up the drive towards the goal of herd immunity? Well, herd immunity is proving very difficult to attain. Here in Germany, the numbers of vaccinated people is stagnating. Right now, around 58.2% of the population is fully vaccinated. And the Robert Koch Institute is aiming for an 85% rate among people aged between 18 and 59, and a rate of 90% for those aged over 60. And they hope that this will contain the fourth coronavirus wave. Maybe Germany will do something similar to what they did in neighbouring France, where vaccinations jumped after President Emmanuel Macron unveiled a plan for citizens to have to show a health pass for many daily activities. Federal and state governments have been turning to increasingly creative ways to try and combat the country's faltering vaccination programme, such as turning vaccination centres into party areas and providing vaccinations at the airport. Chancellor Angela Merkel has repeated a call for unvaxxed people to get the jab. She said after months with too few jabs, now they have enough to vaccinate everybody and people should do the right thing. The anti-vaccination lobby have made headlines in Germany, but a recent survey shows that only 10% of those still unvaccinated in Germany are completely against receiving a coronavirus vaccine out of principle. So maybe things will improve. Many thanks, EW correspondent Clifford Kuhn there with the latest. Elsewhere, Israel has extended its coronavirus campaign, a vaccine campaign that is, to include booster shots for people over the age of 40. It's recommending that uh, teachers, healthcare workers, people who, are, who care for the elderly, pregnant women of all ages, do the same as well. Here's more on the global COVID-19 update. Israelis aged over 40 and teachers are now eligible for a third dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. So we had the 60s, 50s, now 40s. Uh, we're giving them third vaccines. And I think it's the only way to get out of the pandemic and the only way to finish with all of this. And I think everybody needs to come and do it as soon as it's possible. The expansion of booster eligibility following a recommendation by health ministry experts comes a day after the United States announced plans to offer booster doses to all Americans, citing data showing diminishing protection. Other countries, including Canada, France and Germany, have also planned booster campaigns. In South Africa, the country is now offering vaccines to those aged 18 and 35, and it chases a target of 300,000 inoculations per day. I'm encouraging everyone to come through and vaccinate. Our parents, um, my age group, everyone, let's just come and vaccinate. This will save us. We're hoping. The country has recorded the most coronavirus infections and deaths on the African continent, but so far it has only fully vaccinated less than 8% of its 60 million population. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has extended a nationwide lockdown as the number of COVID-19 cases in the country widens beyond its largest city, Auckland, to the capital, Wellington. We just don't quite know the full scale of this Delta outbreak. All in all, that tells us we need to continue to be cautious and that we need more time before we have the complete picture we need to change our settings. So on that basis, the Director General of Health has recommended and Cabinet has agreed to keep all of New Zealand at level four until 11.59 p.m. on Tuesday, August 24. New Zealanders had been living virus-free and without curbs until Arden on Tuesday ordered a snap three-day nationwide lockdown and seven-day shutdown in Auckland after discovering the country's first case since February. And in neighbouring Australia, authorities have extended a COVID-19 lockdown in Sydney until the end of September. So we're doing everything we can, we've thrown everything at this, and now it's time to bunker down. And I can't stress that enough. 
It is time for all of us to bunker down, uh, take this as seriously as we can, although so many of us have, the vast majority have. Uh, this is it. We do everything we can to reduce case numbers and we do everything we can to get those vaccination rates up. Australia, which has successfully suppressed the virus for most of the pandemic, is struggling to contain the Delta outbreak, a sharp turnaround for a country which had experienced only sporadic flare-ups for several months this year. According to the NCDC, home-based care is to be given to COVID-19 patients with mild symptoms only on the advice of trained and designated health workers. Let's all continue to take responsibility. For more updates, you can take a look at our website. It has breaking news and also a better understanding of the pandemic. It's channelstv.com. That's the program this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Minister Central Walker. Stay healthy. Thank <laughs> you.